are we are we on the air okay we're going actually i don't even have to hide so much now <laughs> welcome to buddy uh, uh to hobart eh? <laughs> yeah so uh, uh we got here no engine yep um how was it coming in oh it was uh, frustrating um it's it's been like everything else the last 10 days have been either feast or famine i mean it's either been 40 or 50 knots or four or five knots and yeah. um we had that again last night. I was coming in. I thought I was going to be calling you at three in the morning to come and uh, do this. <laughs> and then it's been 18 hours since then. And, um, you know, it, the wind just died and I drifted around in the mouth of the Derwent River for 15 hours. Yeah. Yeah. We saw it coming with the weather. And yeah. and uh, it's always, you know, Sydney Hobart races won and lost in the Derwent, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's cool. You look yeah. good coming in. The boat looks great. I mean, it's all good except underwater. That's all it is, you know. Yeah. I, I, just the other day, um, I had we had zero knots uh, out there, and the sea was like a mirror. And I took a torch and a, uh, I put it a waterproof torch, and I put it on the end of my uh, boat hook, and I held it underneath. It lit up like a, a David Attenborough National Geographic show. <laughs> all these beautiful, beautiful mollusks and barnacles and things, all with their little fans out, filter feeding at night as they yeah. do. And the boat is just like carpeted with them. Unbelievable. And you can't see them in the daytime. Um, yeah. the, they, I don't know if they're just the same color as the water, but yes. at night. Yeah, we, you could only see them in profile here because it's the yeah. same color as the copper coat. You know, like yeah. it's really sort of quite cool. Yeah. And I could see really dramatically you were making huge leeway oh, when you were it, coming up it, the it river. It was so frustrating. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It was very pronounced. It's been yeah. the story of the last three and a half weeks yeah, yeah. Mm. still pretty epic effort halfway around the world you must be feeling happy in a strange way happy and sad oh, it's uh, it, it is what it is you know getting angry getting sad is not going to change anything so yeah. uh, just make the best of it and i'm at the point of no return it's equidistant <laughs> from from uh, home now so it's just i may as well carry on and i think it'll be fun yeah and i can do it in a much more relaxed way there's less at stake and um I've already told the rest of the competitors all the things that I'm going to be having on board that they wish that they had <laughs> had. <laughs> and so uh, th there will be some sort of element of satisfaction. Yeah. yeah, we're right next to Fish Frenzy, which is a very famous restaurant here in Hobart. Yeah. Well, I won't go famous, but popular. Yeah. And it's right there, so I know you'd be busting to <laughs> get places. Uh, so, yeah. But you've, you've absolutely come to terms with it. I mean, it was a mm. bit of a no-brainer and a decision, really. And It, it was, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. There, there was only one solution you know I, I I don't have enough food to go around the world at three knots yeah and um, so I would have had to have called in somewhere so I may as well do it here and then enjoy the rest of the yeah. trip rather than sweat it across the Pacific and eventually end up in somewhere in South America uh, you know trying to organize myself and get the boat slipped uh, so this makes perfect sense yeah. yeah you're pretty relaxed coming in arms folded there the, the wind pilot steering away you know <laughs> boat hooking along to about two minutes to put a reef, rack a reef in all that sort of was stuff. it that long i'm <laughs> just beginning out of practice <laughs> no, no it's pretty pretty slick so uh, so so where's the enjoyment so far you know like this the solitude the, the yeah. serenity what is it you know Don't, it, it's it, it, like everything i mean you've done it, it it's you there's highs and lows um, yeah. on almost on a daily basis and I find um, I don't think I'd be a very good Scandinavian because <laughs> the moment that there's sun my mood is is lifted I, I yeah. this a solid week with no sun and just rain and drizzle and things that really is depressing especially if you're not really going very quickly um, yeah. and but the moment there's sun and you get out there and it's sparkling and you're making decent progress, so I mean, it, it makes the world a difference. And, yeah. Mm. And so, uh, what's what's been the most enjoyable thing? Like, is it the cooking? Is it the navigation? Is it the sail training? Is it just kicking back and letting the boat do its own thing? You know, where, where's your, you know, how yeah. do you feel about that? Two things that I've really, really enjoyed, um, and one or a third is now possible. Um, I've really enjoyed the celestial navigation. It yeah. gives me a reason to to do stuff. I, you know, I, want, I can't wait to do that longitude sight in the mo in the morning. Um, you know, like checking my watch for <laughs> celestial noon. I want to I want to find out where we are. And you know, and if if we get a clear evening, um, I've been doing a few planets and star sights, and I'm really really loving it. it that's been great. The other thing is I've been getting more and more into the cooking. 
which has been a bit of a double-edged sword because I was starting to run low on food because I was Ooh, experimenting a lot. <laughs> but now I'm gonna now I can stock up again. So you know, yeah. it, it it makes also a big difference. But I've been yeah. been enjoying um, experimenting with food. The, the big unknown was how much gas I had left. So, you know, I didn't want to cook too much, but that's been great. Yeah. And then the other thing is uh, reading. I, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed it. To sit in the cockpit on a nice sunny day with a spinnaker up and just one foot ready to kick the tiller in case you have to. And reading a good book is just, you know, with the albatrosses flying around, it's just magnificent. And um, unfortunately, I've read all the books twice except War and Peace. <laughs> and so, so now um, I'm going to go and find a second-hand bookshop and trade all of them in and get a whole new stock. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So now you got the sounds of civilization, sirens, helicopters landing over the hospital, and all, all the yeah. bits. How does that feel? Is it a culture shock? Uh, what was it? It will be a culture shock. You know, the the thing about the birds, um, you know, the albatrosses, the petrels, the those, those little guys that skip on the water they're absolutely we silent the storm petrels jesus birds they oh, walk they, on water yeah, they, just they like, feed they feed they pull up the plankton on their feet that, knead it off their is that what they do yeah they've got orange web feet i was trying to work out favorites. what they would do yeah yeah but um they, they none of them ever make a sound no. you know it's dead silent you know they, uh, the other night i had 11 wandering albatross youngsters yeah. flying around me and when they all got together in in the water they looked like a bunch of dodos because you know they're <laughs> like really big birds and then there was a little bit of chatter yeah but other than that it's absolutely silent and yeah but then the boat is never silent because there's always wind noise there's always water noise um so and there's always a tin rolling somewhere that you've got to find and yeah elliot just found one that's been bugging him for the whole trip <laughs> <laughs> he said he said finally found that bloody rattle take him halfway around the world to find it anyway yeah hey what watch are you using we, we see you looking at your watch um, i haven't got, got oh, uh, what, I've, what is it which i've one? got an old uh, rolex dress watch which was given to me by a club member at false bay yacht club oh, cool. um and it's minute and hour hand are absolutely perfect but it it, it gains and loses a variable amount of time every day yeah so I, I have to do, be very careful with the the time checks and, yeah. and, and then get yeah. those yeah yeah okay so how's life down below still dry and reasonable and all that sort of stuff um, like comfortable this is going to get uh, unbolted and reseated yeah. because it leaks okay and uh, it's amazing how much water can come in through there and and where it ends up yeah so yeah it, it it's made life a little unpleasant but yeah. now i can i can sort it out it's well. a brilliant dodger eh? this is fantastic yeah. it is absolutely the best thing i mean uh, the little tent at the back you know it, yeah. it's transparent yeah and the the days that i've sat behind it and it warms you up inside it's like a greenhouse yeah and you just watch these massive waves coming and breaking <laughs> on the transom <laughs> and you bone dry and i'm sitting in my shorts with a pair of socks i just keep my feet warm uh, yeah uh, mind you, I think Uku would be thinking, geez, the weather's interesting for you guys this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's been a bit different, eh? Yeah. So that's cool. Um, okay, and the game plan generally, like how many days you reckon it's going to take? We, we, we won't get out of here. We've got to clear, we haven't cleared customs yet, but yeah. uh, they're on their way apparently. And then tomorrow we go back and get you on the slip about midday. Yeah. And what do you, what, what's the plan? How many days you reckon? I reckon I looked at my. Uh, original plan and i reckon uh, 96 days yeah from um leaving here to to arriving in the sable okay and yeah, yeah. and that that would be a good it'll be a good push yeah but i am going to push it i want to i'll have a nice clean bottom yeah um i'll be revitalized i'll have as much food as i want to eat yeah and um i'm gonna i've learned a lot on the trip i mean anyone who thinks they, they know everything about sailing is fooling themselves. I've learned a lot about this boat, I've learned a lot about myself and I'll be able to push a lot harder on the on the next leg. Yeah. And I think I've got some ideas about how to Haven't been able to find. It's probably yeah. a fuse or a solenoid or something. That's yeah. just, yeah. Um, someone okay. who knows how to operate a, a multimeter will probably find it in minutes. Yeah. Yeah. True. The sails look good. The rig looks good. 
everything's pretty slick. You know, don't, uh, touch wood, I haven't, nothing, has, uh, I mustn't even, maybe I mustn't even say it, but... Yeah, don't say it. Everything <laughs> has, looks good. Everything has worked <laughs> absolutely perfectly. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's, she's the easiest boat in the world to sail. Um, I, I, I just can't get over, and when she's clean, how easily she goes. She yeah, just, yeah. She just yeah. really, really yeah. goes well. Yeah, too true. Yeah. You know, right. just to show you what this, these barnacles have done, my watch and see generator doesn't charge because we're going too slowly. Oh, Literally, it does. It puts in point one of an amp. Yeah. And yeah. because we're not going fast enough for it to charge. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Um, eh? mm. Yeah. Crazy. Mm. All right. All good. So uh, glad you're here. I'm not sure what happened with our live. We're out there when you come in, and all of a sudden it's showing we lost audio. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it was a yeah. bit, but it was a bit wet, and everyone got a bit wet. But anyway, yeah, we're back it, here and, it, and stuff. So, yeah. so I'm sure everyone will be happy to see you in. Uh, disappointed you've gone to Chichester, but hey, that's the GGR. Yeah. You know, and it's still a great voyage. I mean, you're going to do a yeah. Chichester voyage now. So you know, I don't see the point of putting myself through so much pain and so much uncertainty just, oh, look, just I'm with you all the way non-stop yeah. you know that's yeah. the only word uh, no no mm. it's, it's it's the challenge is there the adventure's still there you know yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, it's a sensible thing the barnacles is a huge issue right? a lot of people talking about it yeah. and uh, yeah. and so what's your plan with the copper coat you're going to paint over it or you're going to that's why i want to i want to talk to someone who knows more than i do about yeah. it um, if, if it's possible to put an ablative coating over it that yeah. will see me through uh, three quarters of the way back, yeah. you know, um, yeah. then, I, then I'll be happy. Because yeah. funnily enough, I sailed from Cape Town to, to Falmouth and the, to the Azores, to Falmouth, to Guillaume and then to Le Sable yeah. with no with a couple of little muscles yeah. that attach themselves. You know, there's all sorts of theories going on. One of them mm. is there might be clouds of these baby barnacles, and if mm. you sail through one of the clouds, you're buggered because yeah. some of the boats going across the Caribbean are the same. Mm. When they've gone south, you know, if you mm. go through a cloud, maybe it gets you. If you mm. don't, maybe it doesn't. So, yeah, Because uh, there's a bit of inconsistency in the fleet, you yeah. know, in, in all the boats. Well, some I mean, are, Guy had really good anti-fouling on his boat, yeah, and, yeah. and he had yeah. more of a problem than I had. Yeah, because yeah. mm. the others, you know, Gug's got hardly any, but mm. he... Uh, and he's uh, got the same anti-fouling as, as, as Guy. Exactly. So yeah. there must be something funny going on there. But anyway, luck of the draw. That's it is, life. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Okay. All good. So we'll uh, no doubt catch up later on and yeah. uh, uh, do another one. Before